Hello everyone, how are all of you doing tonight? Um, my name is Mr. Copper and I teach a class here on my YouTube channel via live stream every single Wednesday through Sunday from 2 to 4 p.m. Central and 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock p.m. Central. Uh, I have been quite late um, this past week now because we've been still getting settled at our new house. I hope that you understand. Getting moved in is quite a process. It's very daunting. I didn't realize how daunting it was and what a hill it was to, act to actually climb. But we're getting through it, and uh, probably by the end of next week, we should be... Probably by the end of next week, we should be settled, and uh, we should have things going on. You know, we should have our stuff together. And, Verzrick, I would appreciate it if you would not join the Rotten Eggs. I am... Uh... I don't co-sign that. The Rotten Eggs, okay. It is an unhealthy obsession with causing hatred and getting reactions from me. I don't find it amusing in the slightest. And I'd, I would appreciate it if you would respect me. And instead refrain from joining the Rotten Eggs until it's been changed to what it was originally intended to be. Uh, at least that's what I'm I'm a feminist. Who said that women being treated unfairly? It was told... I was told that it would be a good apple and Aubrey created it and made it a in collaboration with Cameron made rotten eggs and I don't appreciate that so um today I wanted to talk to all of you about well porn now, I'm sure every single one of you have been exposed to porn uh, to some degree. I'm sure that, you know, we've all had some kind of encounter with pornography or, any, or you know, pornographic uh, imagery, whether it be hentai or, you know, straight up porn like Pornhub, X Hamster, you know, uh, U-Porn, any of the big porn websites out there, um, they've, they've had their... They've, they've had quite a big reach on the internet. In fact, they're probably one of the most popular uh, websites on the entire internet. I, uh, I've, I, I've watched porn, you know, quite a bit. I have, and, uh, you know, I've gone through periods of time in my life where I've watched it more often than I, than I probably should have, than what was healthy. And I've also gone through periods of my life where I have not really watched porn at all, hardly ever. It's kind of almost like a seasonal thing. Um, there is such a thing as porn addiction. Porn is a, uh, it can be a very habit, habit forming. And uh, let me cut that down a little. You know, pornog pornography can be very uh, unhealthy. You know, anything in moderation can be fun. But uh, if you don't have some kind of, you know, method to moderate it and like, 
allow yourself to be like, okay, this is a little too much. You know, I'm doing this too much. Like even drinking too much water, drinking too much water can hurt you. Eating too much food can hurt you. I mean, I'm a feminist. We said that women be treated unfairly. You know, I, I've eaten, I've eaten quite a lot of food. Okay. Food, food is healthy. Food is great for you. You're supposed to eat. You don't want to be anemic. You don't want to be, uh, you know, and I'm not trying to body shame, but you know, you, you look at people like Eugenia Cooney and these people that are incredibly, incredibly skinny, like to where you can see their skeleton. That's unhealthy. That's, you know, that that's very unhealthy. It's an unhealthy lifestyle. And if you're struggling with some kind of body dysmorphia or anorexia nervosa or bulimia, uh, please seek support. You know, you are loved. Go see a therapist. Reach out to somebody. We care about you. People care about you. You're not alone. And you're not the first person to struggle with this kind of thing. And, you know, you won't be the last, unfortunately. But that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, you shouldn't seek help. Uh, I've eaten food, okay? On that. This And I've got a point here. I've eaten quite a lot of food. And it's left me a little bit chump chunky, okay? Now... <laughs> Now, you can also get unhealthy from porn. When you start to develop an addiction to it, you know, you get... What happens is, is you get a dopamine uh, release. When you're watching pornography, you're almost high. You almost get physically high. You get intoxicated. You know, you, your mind is altered for a brief moment of time until you ejaculate or until you orgasm. You're kind of entranced. You're addicted. You know, you're, uh, you're drunk, you're, you're high off of your own hormones and that dopamine, that dopamine release, you know, that, uh, that quick, ah, you know, will often lead to what we call post ejaculation clarity, post nut clarity and, or, or guilt, you know, you'll feel uh, feelings of shame or guilt. You know, feeling like you might not get to heaven if you're religious. Feeling like, you know, you're ashamed. Like, there's all kinds of feelings that people feel and uh, after ejaculating. Some people don't care, and that's fine. You know, that's your thing. But, like, uh, you know, uh, it is a stress release. Anyway, look, we're not just going to talk about the negatives, okay? I want to talk about the positives, too. I do. Now, porn can be addictive, Okay. But uh, it's not always addictive. I'm not addicted to it. I have not become addicted to it, fortunately. I don't have a very addictive personality, and I get that from my grandma. So Meemaw has probably helped me not become addicted to porn. Now, and when I say that, don't take that the wrong way. Of course, I mean that my grandma's personality trait when it comes to addiction. Okay, I told you to not join the fucking Wonderheads! What did I say?! Stop! Why are you so fucking annoying? I'm trying to be calm! I am trying to maintain my composure and you're pissing me off! Stop! Idiot! Quit joining the Rotten Eggs! I tried to be nice. I tried. I tried my damnedest to be patient. Ten minutes. You people have been constantly in the chat room. Pissing me off. And what have I done? What have I done? You're a bunch of jerk-offs. Is what you are. Speaking of... Anyway... Any way. Let's bring it back home. Let's bring it back down to earth. Now. Now, when I bring up the P word here, okay, and I don't mean pussy. Uh, porn, you know, there are pros, okay, 
And what are those pros? Hmm? Well, uh, one of the pros is that it's a stress, you know, it's a stress release. It's a stress buster. You're not only busting a nut, you're busting stress. Um, it's been scientifically proven, in fact, that engaging in any form of sexual activity, you know, be it with a partner or yourself, will increase the production of dopamine, and uh, which is, of course, a uh, chemical that the brain produces, um, you know, and it will uh, enhance your mood and it will release... Uh, you know, it, hormones that will stress, uh, uh, lower your stress. Now, <clears throat> that's one of the reasons why people get addicted to pornography is that they chase that feeling. They chase that dragon, if you will. <clears throat> now, some people use pornography to ejaculate and then it helps them sleep. You know, um, there's a lot of, you know, uh, another benefit of pornography is that it, it can spice up your sex life. Say you're, you know, you've been with your partner for a long time and these things do happen. Um, you know, you've been married for 30 years, 20, 30 years or 20, 30, however many years. Okay. It doesn't matter. And you're looking for some way to, of course, uh, keep that fidelity and not become, and you know, don't, don't cheat. Uh, you know, you're getting kind of you know, bored in the bedroom, Th this will happen no matter how hot your wife is. You might find yourself being like, you know, you've studied, you have, you have observed every inch of I'm a feminist. Who said that women being treated unfairly? I am trying to talk right now, Cotton. Stop attempting to interrupt me. You know, you have gone over this person's body every square inch of them. He, her, any gender. And you know them very well and you've been sleeping with them for 20, 30 years. Maybe you're looking for a... And I'm not saying that this is everyone. Maybe some people just don't get don't get tired of seeing their wife or their husband, you know? And they really just are insanely uh, an, infatu infatuated with their body as well, like physically. And that's awesome. And And, you know... That's amazing. God bless you. But uh, I, uh, you know, if you are looking for some way to spice it up and, uh, you know, add something to it, people have used pornography to spice up their, uh, their, their, you know, their sex life. You know, it's a, it's an easy way to discover what turns you on and what doesn't. Um, of course, that doesn't mean that pornography, the things that you watch equals uh, things that you would like in real life. Uh, you know, you might find yourself watching gay pornography, uh, but you would actually identify as a heterosexual person. Heterosexual men can watch gay pornography and be stimulated by it and become aroused by it. But when they were, you know, if you put that same male in front of a man uh, in, in, in the real world, okay, physically in the same room, the idea of sucking the other guy's cock or, or doing something sexual with that man might seem grotesque and totally off-putting you know it, it's more of a fantasy thing or even not even just a fantasy thing or just a that kind of idea it's you know also it can be a thing where it's like just sexual stimulation just sexual imagery might cause you to get an erection and uh you know just seeing sexual things happening on a screen might cause you to get erect it doesn't mean that your sexuality is one way or another it, so so don't feel threatened or uh don't be a homophobe but you don't need to freak out either um you know it's a broad spectrum <laughs> uh and and i can't i'm a okay. feminist and, and, women being treated unfairly. And i say this as a bisexual Thank God i'm not okay. a copper cab Cotton? because i'd have to i am trying to talk right now I can you shut up as i want because i'm Be a funny quiet. man women love my enormous schlong in fact you better refer to me as mandingo eugene so ha ha you think i'm a fucking gin a gin cell Drop a woman one in the live chat if you think that I'm if you think that if you think I'm involuntarily celibate, drop a woman one. I'm telling you now, if I wanted to have sex, I could. I dated Belle Delphine for one year, and we had a mutual separation. Okay. I could have had sex with my my sweetheart. 
And who's to say that I won't in the future? Okay. Am I a virgin currently? I've got my V card. I've got it nice packed and snug in my wallet. And I carry it with me everywhere I go with pride. I carry my V card with pride. Nothing wrong with being a virgin, okay? If you're a virgin out there, don't be upset about it. It's everyone is born a virgin. Anyway, um, yeah, so as I was saying, you know, there's there's pros, but there's also cons. Uh, it has actually been proven that, uh, you know, there's there are contradictory views on this matter, but <clears throat> porn-induced erectile dysfunction is apparently a downside to the heavy consumption of pornography. So if you watch a lot of porn, you might have a harder time getting an erection. This has been debated, so don't take what I'm saying uh, as scripture or gospel. I'm not saying this. This is not what that is. I don't know for sure if this is the case, but this is something that has been reported. You know, um, Certain doctors have said that. Uh, there's uh, Dr. Jennifer Johnson, a professor in the Department of Sociology of the College of Humanities and Sciences at the Virginia uh, Commonwealth University in the USA. Uh, she shared with a portal, uh, among college-aged heterosexual men, 51% masturbated to pornography several times a week, 19% use it several times a month, and 13.5% use it daily. This suggests that the fantasy can be more stimulating than reality, resulting in a decreased libido. And with such staggering numbers of men being aroused on a regular basis, it's no wonder then that erectile dysfunction could be a byproduct of this syndrome. So basically, in, in layman's terms, the more you jack off, the more you watch things that are so stimulating to you, the less reality might seem stimulating by comparison. You know, if you're used to watching hardcore porn and, you know, and you've done all this and you've watched it so much before you've even had sex for the first time, the first time you might have sex might not seem like a big deal in comparison to all that crazy shit you've been watching for years. So, that could be a side effect, and I'm not saying that it's 100% certain, but it's a possibility. And uh, that's probably one worth avoiding. If it were me, I would want to avoid that. Um, so, yeah. You got to be careful about that. Um, aggression, you know, uh, there is negative impact in the in the realm of like influence and stuff. Like when you watch pornography, you know, it's not just stimulating you and, you know, getting you in those endorphin releases and, you know, uh, stimulating you sexually. You're also getting a, it's aggressive, you know, it's aggressive. Like, there is an ethical porn movement that's underway with feminist porn and things like that. And, and, and by the way, feminist pornography is, well, I'm not going to say it's amazing, but, uh, you know, when, when a partner asks for consent in the video or, or things like that or, like, you know, it's important to remember that these are people. These aren't just actors in a movie. These aren't superheroes. You know, this isn't the MCU. There's no Marvel Cinematic Universe for porn, okay? This is not a, these aren't cartoon characters. These are real people with real parents and real brothers and sisters, possibly. You know, they have families with kids and husbands and wives of their own. And these are real people that aren't just always fucking. These, they have lives of their own. And these are real people and they should always feel comfortable, especially in a situation like that where they are being so vulnerable and displaying themselves like that for the entertainment of so many people. And, you know, um, but the thing is, there's a lot of pornography out there that depicts, unfortunately, some unsettling things. Uh, trigger warning here for anyone who doesn't want to hear about the R word, R-A-P-E. Um, but, uh, in fact, I won't even say the word. I'll just spell it out. There are, uh, there, there is pornographic material Unfortunately, uh, depicting R.A.P.E. and things of that nature, which is very unsettling and, to be frank, kind of scary. And having that influence <clears throat> people of any age uh, is an unsettling thought. And, you know, the relationship, you know, that you might form with a person one day, the fact, the idea that that could be influenced, like, in the bedroom by these kind of malicious, you know, influence, like these videos and these films... The way they depict sex is that can twist you, uh, whether you even realize it or not or know it or not. It's uh, 
it's it's kind of it's kind of scary, um, you know, making you feel like that's that's a normal thing that that's a normal uh, relationship dynamic that's acceptable and normal and. You know, when you're when you're younger and you watch movies that you know Disney movies, they teach you. They usually a Disney movie will have moral, like a moral story, a, you know, the moral of the story. South Park, uh, as you all know, I don't like that show, but I did. I did used to watch it. People know that. Um, before they made fun of ginger people, which is when I quit and I decided to boycott the show. But before I started boycotting South Park, I used to watch it, and uh, I found it quite funny when I was younger. Uh, of course, I grew up. And, you know, and I realized that it was stupid, you know, potty mouth trash, uh, basically porn, um, but it's not porn, not literally anyway. Uh, South Park actually used to parody that kind of film trope. Uh, back in the day, they would actually have, you know, guys, I learned something today. Like they would have Stan say that at the end of the episode. This would go on for a few episodes. They stopped doing it eventually because the trope I got, I'm sure got it got bore, boring parodying the same trope, but. <clears throat> Uh, I say that to to mention that it is, you know, it's not like these companies are oblivious to their influence over us. Uh, like Disney and some of the major media corporations know that their content, their films, their it's not just content. These movies, these these TV shows have influence over kids and the youth, and you know, even adults like you and I. Um, and so they try to have some moral. Some moral groundedness is, is if that's even a word. They try to have some kind of morals to teach, something to teach, not just entertain. Which is of course like what I try to do. I try to not just entertain people, but educate people. I call it entertain educating. Um, and so yeah, as you're educating people, you're influencing them, whether they even realize it or not, and they'll carry things with them. And so that all being said, um, who's to say that porn doesn't have a, a similar effect? doesn't matter your age, like, whatever, you know, who, who, no, when I say it doesn't matter your age, I mean, you can be influenced at any age, you know, you can be a 40-year-old, look at what happened with Donald Trump and him becoming elected, and now look at the QAnon phenomenon, um, QAnon phenomenon, that kind of is fun to say, but <clears throat> it's about the only thing fun <laughs> in that, on that topic, but, uh, you know, Maybe I'll do my stream. I'm a feminist who said that women being treated unfairly. Copper, anyway. what should I do about my obsession with Brazilian fart porn? Ever since the day I watched you expose your cute little bunghole to Gavin, I've been obsessed and watching women expel gastric gas into the face of a man makes me think of you. Help me. Well, I'm not here to kink shame. But I would appreciate you not commenting on here, Chad, and talking about fart porn. Brazilian. Brazilian fart porn? What? Anyway. Good lord. Any, it's not funny. <laughs> People in the chat. That was fucking weird. Um, yeah, the, the reason I say the age thing is like. And when I was talking about age, what I was what I was talking about in terms of age was, it doesn't matter how old you are, you can be influenced by media. And so, uh, on that note, uh, you can be twenty in your twenties watching porn, and you can be influenced by that. You can be, you know, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, whatever, and be influenced by any material that any material that you consume, anything that you're watching, your that's especially something that's stimulating your brain. And releasing endorphins and things like that and giving you stress relief you, your mind might consume that and your mind might absorb that information and think that you know it might have a bigger influence on you than you may realize and so there is a lot of aggression in porn and uh, there's a lot of violence and there's a dark side to the porn industry and men need to be able to ke learn to keep that in check and uh, that can take a big toll on your sex life if you don't learn to kind of differentiate re like not the, okay yeah it's not that it's not a matter of differentiating reality it's a matter of differentiating okay this is a fantasy this is porn and this is not how sex actually is this is not how somebody's sex life in a normal household would probably be like this is a production this is a movie this is 
entertainment. This is an actual... Like, when you watch the MCU and you watch, you know, Avengers Endgame and you see space, you know, titans like Thanos roaming around on ships and teleporting... I'm a feminist. Who said that women like, treated that's unfairly? That's actually happening. That's a, that's a film. You know, the, the world doesn't actually work that way. You know, Iron Man, okay, Iron Man... What are you talking about? It took you becoming Catholic this year to realize how destructive and addictive it is. Porn kills love and therefore should be banned. Hashtag porn kills love. Well, that's certainly, you know, you're entitled to your opinion, Johnny. I'm, I wouldn't go as far to say that porn kills love. I mean, you can still be in love and, and fall and fall in love and have love and watch pornography. In my opinion, and this is, I'm not saying that this is fact even. I'm saying that this is my opinion. Um, as I'm as I'm entitled to mine, as you are entitled to your opinion as well. Um, I think that you know there's tons of healthy relationships. I mean, it's just I think it's a matter of respect, equal respect. You know, trust is a big thing. Um, as long as your wife isn't jealous, or or uh, or your husband's not jealous of you viewing pornography. As long as there's some kind of uh, open, you know, if if you're open about things and you're honest about things, and there's a level of respect and comfort. With one another, I think that um, if there's a mutual respect and a mutual trust, uh, I think that you're fine. You know, as long as you know that you're partners and that it's you and her, or her and him, or him and him and her or her, whatever the uh, the or, or the genders, you know, mix. Um, I think that it comes down to trust and love and respect. Um, you can, I in my opinion, you could if if I had a wife and she wanted to watch pornography, I would trust her. You know, I mean, she married me, so. You know, you go through all that, changing your names and doing all this stuff. You know, obviously it means something. So, <laughs> I just, back to the point of the aggression stuff, you know, you got to be careful. Um, yeah, it's, like you can get addicted, you can, you can become turned on by bondage. And you can become turned on by like bondage themed porn, okay? And your partner might not be into that. You know what I mean? Just because you're into something sexually uh, or something stimulates you and, you know, um, it doesn't mean that your partner or somebody that you're with, it doesn't mean that somebody that you get with will be into that as well. And you can't expect them to conform to that. That's not fair. You know, I mean, you wouldn't like that done to you. You wouldn't want someone pushing something on you that you didn't like. Now, it's okay to try things as long as you're comfortable and it's consensual. Uh, I think that that's, you know, that can be healthy and that can be fun uh, to discover things about yourself, uh, especially with somebody that you trust, a partner that you love and that you care about and that you trust. In. Trust is a big thing. I keep saying trust, but that's important. Trust is really important, you know. And and, not, and, to, and to feel like, you know, that you, you can be yourself with somebody and be comfortable and to not worry about being taken advantage of being taken advantage of um but anyway again respect and trust very important uh you know but you might not be turned on by bondage and your partner might be okay let's let's do the reversal there your partner's turned on by bondage you're not what do you do i mean then, then you end up getting with them and it's awful it's an awful experience this can have negative impacts on your relationship things like that it's very I'm a feminist. Who said that women being treated very unfairly? unfairly. Very unfairly. Plus, don't indeed. let him fool you when he's talking about pwn he's referring that move the brave little toaster. That poor little toaster didn't stand a chance against the raging need to not picture even toaster. toaster is way too young for him. I don't fuck toasters. What are you talking about? Shut up. Dumbass. Quit commenting. Now, those are... Those are some pros and negatives, and I say that for, like, men and stuff like that, okay? Now, on the other side, you know, with women, cis and trans, regardless of gender, really, but I'm going to just... I'm going to state some examples for women. Uh, you know, porn can help... I'm a feminist. Who said that women being treated unfairly? I'm trying to talk right now, Johnny. Okay, that's 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 fine to, to leave a, a link, okay? But we're not looking at that right now, okay? I'm teaching a class. I need all of you to shut up. 
for women, uh, porn can help you express your sexuality. Um, uh, it can work wonders for women in, in, a, in a few ways, actually. Not only is it liberating, uh, you know, and it's a means of accessible release, as is the case with men and other genders as well. Uh, it also has an impact on uh, your sex drive. You know, uh, it's been said that when a woman watches pornography, uh, it can it can possibly increase her libido, and it could prove useful for women with a low sex drive. Uh, says Dr. I'm a feminist. You said that women being treated unfairly. That's a doctor. Or is a man that. or a women's manual to improve sex life? I am Project. So Shut up. To fat single guys. Grand gender baby. Coin, coin key. When I teach. Coin, coin key. Oink coin key. I am oink not coin a fucking key. pig. Oink coin key. Oink I am not a pig. pig. Do I look like a fucking pig to you? Do you want me to call my Mimo and tell her that you're interrupting my porn class? Do you want me to call my Mimo, my grandmom, on FaceTime and tell her you are interrupting my class when I'm trying to teach people about porn? Shut up! Grand ginger baby, you little fucking prick. Got me grabbing my daggum camera constantly. So annoying. Anyway, now I'm not saying that porn will absolutely increase, you know, your sex drive regardless of gender. I'm not saying that it will increase your sex drive or your libido. But that was just what one doctor said apparently. <clears throat> now, now uh, it can foster... Another pro, uh, you know, is, you know, uh, it fosters a stronger bond. Um, you know, if you're looking at strengthening your relationship with your partner in bed, watching adult content together, like together as a couple, could, could not for sure, but could prove to be a good move in the direction. Um, you know, it can keep lines of communication open. You know, uh, foster an honest relationship. Men usually develop feelings of shame or guilt while watching porn because the general attitude is for, for women to make them feel that they've crossed the line of morality. I don't know about that. Uh, I'm, I'm reading a quote here. Uh, men usually develop feelings of shame or guilt while watching porn because the general attitude is for women to make them feel they've crossed the line of morality. However, porn viewing can be an exercise in togetherness and can help bring the couple closer sexually, physically, and emotionally because they feel stronger once they've had once they have shared their deepest innermost sexual fantasies without judgment says Dr. Jagan Jaganathan Jackoffathon I don't Jackoffathon Dr. Jackoffathon like a marathon for Jack and Go I don't know how to pronounce that name I don't mean to be disrespectful to Jag Jackoffathon Jackoffathon I don't know how you say your name I'm I'm sorry I'm not sorry okay I can't be blamed for not being able to read a name. So, I'm just not going to say your name. I don't want to call you Jack off a -thon, okay? But, you know, the name does... That name would kind of... We are talking about porn. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> some of the con... And, I, and by the way, I'm not saying... Those aren't... the look. When I say that quote earlier about fostering a strong bond, stronger bond, that's not... That's a quote from a, an apparent doctor, okay? So, don't take that, those words from mine. Anyway. Uh, some of the cons of pornography, okay, um, body image, oh boy, okay, right, let's talk about body image, people, okay, most film, adult film stars, most porn stars, okay, you look at people like uh, Mia Khalifa or, you know, um, what's another porn star, okay, and I'm not going to say Belle, De okay, I'll say Belle Delphine, but she's not a porn star, like, um, a male version, you know, there's some men, they usually have, okay, they usually are packing some, okay, some Pringles cans in their pants, okay? Look, if you've got a, Pring if you've got a Pringles can, awesome. If you've got a Pringle, just a chip, awesome. Whatever, okay? You should not feel I'm ashamed a feminist. Who said that women being treated of unfairly? the size of your Pringle, Okay. Pringles come in all shapes and sizes. Now, not you know what I'm you know what I'm talking about. I don't mean the actual chip. Pringles all come as I'm talking about. If you got the can or just the chip, look. Don't let porn make you feel inadequate physically. Okay. Don't let some random fucking porn star. Okay. 
that was hired for a certain reason, which is to create a fantasy, make you feel like you're inadequate or make you feel like, you know, you are, um, like you're below average or something. Look, we should, we should really work hard to understand as, as a society that porn is not a re is not a reality. Okay. These are like actors. Okay. And this isn't like a normal, this isn't like a normal thing. Not all Pringles are nine, 10, 11 inches long. And in fact, well, I'm not going to speak on behalf of women, but you know, they're not all size Queens. Like women, it's more of like the experience. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to speak on behalf of women. Okay. I'm not going to speak for their experience, but if you ask a girl, you know, if you ask a, a woman, she'll probably tell you, it's not all about that. It's not about, you know, look, it's, it's not an issue anyway. Um, what was I saying? Right. So yeah, again, body image, and this goes for women as well. Um, you know, they see these women in these porn films with like these amazing quote unquote, I'm saying amazing here. Okay. Just cause I don't think that they're amazing. It's just, you know, they see these women with these unrealistic, uh, b body, uh, shapes, these standards that they are trying to promote and produce. And uh, that can have a negative feeling a ne that can have a negative impact on your body image, you know? <clears throat> um, that can, uh, you know, when women compare themselves to porn stars, they tend to feel incompetent. Remember, there's a reason they're porn stars. I'm a stars. feminist who said that women being treated unfairly. Partner, queer, 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 sniff, sniff, sniff. I'm trying to read a quote from an article. This, these aren't my words. This is a quote. According to Srivastava, is that how you pronounce that? S-R-I-V-A-S-T-A-V-A. -A -A? Anyway, I don't know how to pronounce that word, but it says, they said when women, and this is in a quote here, when women compare themselves to porn stars, they tend to feel incompetent. Remember, there's a reason they are porn stars. If you and your partner are sexually attracted to each other, porn is just a stimulant to help you spice things up between the sheets rather than a benchmark of what you think your partner expects from you. It's not, you know, that's not something you should expect from a partner. It's all porn is, is like a fantasy little clip, like a movie. Okay. You watch WandaVision, you watch Loki, you don't actually expect Loki's to be flying around in the air or teleporting places. This is a fiction. It's a fantasy. It's not real. Okay. It's not the norm. Like porn is not the norm. Um, and, uh, and of course addiction, right? Addiction. So, uh, internet porn apparently can be extremely addictive. You gotta, uh, you gotta be careful about how much you consume anything, not just porn, but anything. I'm a feminist who said that women be treated unfairly. Tough. And again, Couple with like all these negative pun. side effects. Like scare kitty pun. Jeff, like scare kitty shut pun. the Cop fuck like up! Kitty pun. Cop like what are you kitty talking pun. about? Cop like scare kitty pun. Cop like scare kitty pun. Again, just a random fucking asshole trying to spread bullshit and just LLL and just trying to say the most offensive things that they possibly can to offend me. Why are you on here saying own, like awful lies like that and also just trying to get a reaction out of me? Like that is so incredibly offensive. That is so incredibly offensive. You think that that's funny? Drop a 111 in the live chat if you think that it's funny when people come on here commenting lies and saying hateful and awful things like that. You think that that's fucking funny? Drop a woman one if you think that that comment's funny. If you think Jeff is a fucking comedian and think that saying something like that on someone's live stream when they're trying to educate people about something serious like porn addiction. You think that that's fucking funny? Drop a woman one.
I'm a feminist. I'm, 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 I'm about to just get off the fucking was train. Was intended for singing. Like Stop. Belle Delphine's cunt is juicy to bad. You don't get I'm the pleasure done. of fucking any cunts since your piggy oink oink turns cunt. Shut slime. up. Fat fucking oink oink oink. Shut the fuck up, dude. Just shut up. Anyway, look, people. I'm, I'm a feminist who said that women being treated unfairly. GEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEE
I told you to shut up! You are the first person since I have moved to this new classroom studio. I have, I have not written a name up here not once since we moved here. And look what you have done! My class tonight will be so much better than this shit. GE Trump is hereby no longer allowed to attend any of my streams moving forward. Shut up! I'm sad! Shut up! That's all. All you need to do is just shut the fuck up. Just shut up. Now, I want to watch a clip about three minutes long. It's important to watch something. This is tips to overcome porn addiction. The purpose of your brain on porn video series is certainly not to encourage you to stare at how thick the lab mice are, but to help you be aware that porn is an evolving super stimulus that your brain has less anticipation of, and hence help you stay away from the risk of addiction. The brain plasticity that allows the adjustment to porn addiction behavior. I'm a feminist. Who said that women be treated as Are you, you fucking kidding me right now? Can you not? Toaster's gone wild and hot and meme all okay. Um what what anal adventure what are you talking about anal adventure? Shut up The same stimulus it used to receive, usually termed as rebooting the brain. For those of you who need a self challenge and want to prove that you're not addicted to porn, or just cannot wait until episode eleven of our video to start your recovery journey. Have a visit to your preferred support group initiatives in their online forums, like no fap community, and join many other brave and committed souls to break free from porn addiction and get your life back. The process will be difficult. You may experience some withdrawal symptoms and frequent relapses, but keep on going and beat your previous records again and again, day by day, and things will get easier. Some pro tips for you to be more prepared for the journey. 1. Gather as much knowledge about porn addiction as possible. Also, maybe watch our six under-production episodes in the future. 2. Change your environment. Limit your internet browsing in private. Invite everyone in, or bring your activity to a more public setting. 3. Replace your porn habits with something else you enjoy. For instance, walking in the park or- That's really important. Oftentimes, people will watch pornography, and I've done this in the past, where I've watched porn simply because I was bored. I'm a feminist. Who said that women be treated unfairly? I'm trying Last to teach a class! Shut comes down Shut up! and treats you like the piggy you are. I can't understand how someone can sweat so much and still be gaining 10 pounds a day. Press 666 if you want Pooper to get on his knees and oink like the piggy he is. I'm a feminist. Who said that women be treated unfairly? Are you kidding me right now? Woozy, and if you get Stop! any dripping, that would be a surprise. I bet when you get close to please. orgasm, no, you no, squeal no, loud than say, a pot oh, belly piggy. Oinky oinky squeal. Oinky oinky squeal. Oinky oinky squeal. Now, in the past, I've watched porn. Simply because I was bored. Drop a 111 in the live chat. If you're willing to be honest. And, and you know, drop a 111. If you've done the same. Drop a 111 in the live chat. If, like me, in the past, at any point, you've watched porn. Simply because you were bored and had nothing else to do. And you were like, well, it's something to do. 
How is this the best stream ever, 64 BC man? Shut up in the live chat. I'm trying to teach a fucking class right now. Hot Diggity Wolf dropped a 111. Icarus 3325XD dropped a 111. Jean 197 and Lego Plier dropped a 111 deep. David D. Cyber Codex 888. Okay. Caitlin. Caitlin Peterson dropped a 111. I mean, see, this isn't uncommon. Cameron Walker. Nick's Animation 3rd Channel. John Gray. I'm not trying to, you know, embarrass you by saying your name. Fan of Daft Punk. Okay, people, this happens. I've done that, you know. Uh, you know, Doom TNT was never given a name. Uh, Davey Art. People, you know, if you've ever masturbated just out of pure boredom, drop a one one one, And let others know. Even if they don't drop a one one one, but they secretly have, and they're just, they don't want to put a one 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 in the chat. Just let them know. Be courageous, and be courageous enough to be honest with everyone in this classroom right now. And, you know, and, and just and let them know that, you know, it happens and that they're not, they shouldn't be ashamed. <laughs> and this is a, a common occurrence. I've done it. I've watched porn out of beer, uh, uh, purely out of boredom. Um, but see, what this video is telling us right now, okay, is that when you're feeling that urge, you know, to do things that you might be regretful of later. Not just porn, just in general. Whether it's smoking marijuana after going a long time without smoking weed. Or doing drugs. Or, you know, getting mixed up with the wrong crowd. You know, oftentimes we will get ourselves into these sticky situations. I'm just kidding. Oftentimes we will get ourselves in situations that might not be the best. Because we were bored. And we had nothing else to do. And we were just like, you know, you just wanted to release. You know? From that boredom well when you're feeling bored and you're you know especially you know if you're if you're struggling with some kind of addiction the best thing is to not you know let yourself get too bored like find a hobby you know get some piece get a piece of paper and uh, instead of a tissue and some lotion get a paper and some paint I'm a feminist who said that women be treated unfairly paint a picture or go for a walk outside be around other people you know, call up a friend and go to the movies. If you don't have that many friends, you know, go for a walk and get on Discord. You know, talk to people on a random Discord server. Make friends. Um, if you're if you're kind of antisocial or you get social anxiety, you can join a voice chat and mute, and just listen or just watch a watch a podcast like ugh, like the Joe Rogan podcast or 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 uh, the the oh the Michelle Obama podcast. That's an amazing podcast, by the way. Um, there's awesome, there's awesome podcasts out there uh, that you know you can just listen to while you go for a walk or a jog, and or ride a bike or maybe get pick up take up skateboarding. Uh, not a very well known fact about me is that I can actually skateboard even at this weight. But uh, on well, it's not really a joke, but uh, you know, I'm not super skinny, but I can skateboard. Uh, I might not be able to ollie right now or do a freaking trick or a nollie, but uh, I can skateboard. I can ride. You know, I used to ride the shit out of a skateboard. Um, you know, and I'm not just saying that to brag. I'm saying, like, you can you can find a hobby. And, you know, if you've never skateboarded, maybe that can be your hobby is learning to skateboard. Maybe trying to challenge yourself to learn to do something that you never were able to do before. I'm a feminist. Who said that women being treated unfairly? Also, copper spanks okay. it to incest Excuse rape porn. Copper spanks it to incest rape porn. Wait. Copper spanks it to incest rape porn. Copper spanks it to incest rape porn. What are you talking about? Incest rape porn. No, I don't. To incest rape porn. Copper spanks it to incest rape porn. Copper spanks it to incest rape porn. Stop with the incest joke. I'm a feminist. Who said that women being treated unfairly? With the incest joke. Oink oink yoinky. Oink oink yoinky. Oink oink yoinky. Why are brands and your baby? Okay. Oink oink yoinky. I'm not doing this today. Bet your ass has taken a fat pounding. Fat fucking. Brands and your baby. Shut up. Fucking oink yo. Shut up. I told you to be quiet. Be quiet. I'm a feminist. Who said that women being treated unfairly? No, but seriously, thank you for addressing porn. It is a very important subject to address. No problem, Blue Sky. 
If your name is a reference to Mr. Blue Sky, I like that song a lot. Mr. Blue Sky, very, very, very great song. Um, anyway, as I was saying, before I was rudely interrupted by G.E. Trump and Grand Ginger Baby, two awful people, I was saying, uh, again, like not a lot of people know that about me, but I can skateboard. Uh, my And to the people saying I break skateboards, I've broken a skateboard, but I don't break them from standing on them. Get you a good, durable skateboard from an actual skate shop. Figure out what your size is, what comfortable, you know, my size, and I'm not talking about dick here, is 8 inches, the, the size of my deck. Not dick! Deck! D-E-C-K! Not D-I-C-K! You know, my favorite deck size, not dick size, but deck. D-E-C-K. Deck size. And I'm not, a si I'm not a size queen when it comes to skateboard decks. You know, when it comes to decks, you know, you just got to figure out what size is best for you. But uh, my, my, my preferred deck size is 8. 8 inches. Which is the width of the, the skateboard deck. Okay. Maybe I'll get a skateboard and I will... Uh, I'll do a skating video. You want me to do a skate? Drop a one 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 in the live chat if you want me to do a skate, a skating video, a skateboard video uh, for Copper Cab for the channel. I can show some really cool tricks of, that I can do on a skateboard. Uh, I don't know if I can do a pop shove. Anyway, maybe I can do a pop shove it. I don't know if I can actually do a pop shove it right now though. I, I, I've had I haven't written a skateboard in a, in, a, in a few years. But uh, again, drop a one 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 if you'd like to see me make a skateboard video with like music and some editing and some fun stuff like that. Drop a one 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 if you would like to see that. But uh, anyway, you know, anyway, as I was saying, um, right, hobbies. Pick up a hobby. Go out, walk around. You know, um, it's important to stay. You know, just like with any addiction, it's important to remove yourself from the situation. Where you could fall into a trap where it's like you're and you're 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 feeling like you you could you know relapse like again if you're addicted to marijuana or you had a really bad habit some people go oh weed's not addictive eh weed's very habit forming we're not talking about that today but if you're regardless if you're trying to go a while without smoking weed don't go to a house or a party where there's tons of weed being smoked. If you're trying to get over porn addiction and you don't have many friends, but you, you know, you have friends online, it's okay to get on discord, but don't, but like go for a walk, go outside, like go to a park, ride a bicycle, throw in some AirPods or some earphones or whatever, grab your, your phone and listen to a podcast or talk to friends. Even if you're muted, you know, just join a voice chat, just have something going on. Uh, if that's what you want to do, if you need to have some stimulation like that. Um, or just ride a bike without talking to anybody and get some fresh air. Maybe detox from the internet. I know that the internet is very addictive. Uh, I have a little bit of an addiction, um, admittedly, with like social media. And uh, I think this is something that a lot of people struggle with and don't even realize it. Um, you know, the first thing you do when you wake up, the, one of the first things I do when I wake up is I get on my phone. I'll go to the bathroom. Sit on the toilet, and I'll have my phone out, and I'll open up YouTube or Twitter. Every morning. Now, that's not... I mean, it's kind of like the modern-day version of reading the morning newspaper. Um, so that's, you know, just like looking at new things, anything like what's trending on the on the news on Twitter. You know, what's on the, the, the big... The, what's happening, what's the big to-do of the day. But it's like... If you're just sitting there scrolling all day, which I don't do this, but some people may have a problem with, but if you're just if you find yourself scrolling through social media, that can be addictive. That's an unhealthy thing. And if you're trying to detox and remove yourself from that addiction, maybe uh, you know, go for a walk with a friend. You don't want to go alone without a phone, you know, uh, in case something happens. But have like a friend with you or something. Or, 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 you know, go to a family's house or, you know, go, just go and, I don't know, just do something that doesn't involve you on, to being on your phone. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm just trying to, I'm not trying to preach. I'm not trying to sound preachy or holier than now. I'm not trying to, look. I'm not looking down. I'm telling y'all, I have problems too. I have problems with social media. 
I have problems with food. Um, you know, I, I'll find myself eating sometimes, not even because I'm hungry, but because I'm bored. Boredom is a big thing. Boredom, I think, plays a lot. Uh, I think boredom is a bigger factor than people might understand when it comes to forming habits and like things like addict. I wouldn't say addictions may be full on, but well, maybe, but you know, um, and it's, and it can be hard to admit that you have a problem. Hello, Cyrus T in the live chat. I said copper noticed me. Hello. You are noticed. I'm just kidding. You're not noticed. Fuck you. No, I'm just kidding. No, but seriously though, um, you know, maybe go for a car ride. You know, Tiny Chuckles in the live chat said, I roll down my car windows and blast gingerbread when driving down to Walmart. Well, you can do that, you know. If that's your thing, if you want to, if you're addicted to my, my song Gingerbread or you're addicted to my live streams, uh, you know, try to go a week without, well, without watching any of my live streams or without, you know, listening to Gingerbread. Uh, if that's what you're, if you're addicted to me, if you're addicted to seeing my beautiful face, it might be hard, but try to go a week without looking at my gorgeous visage, without you know, uh, you know, laying your eyes upon thine uh, breathtaking visage, visage. You know, if 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 my if my face is the thing that massages your eyes, if I'm massaging your eyes right now, just by looking at me, um, you might have an addiction to me, and you might need to find something else to do, find a hobby, pick up some hobby, you know. Um, of course, I'm just kidding about that. Okay. I don't think any of you are addicted to looking at me. I'm just making some fun. Um, the point is lots of things can become addictive. Things that we don't even realize could be addictive, like, you know, regular food, um, or a certain kind of drink, soda, you know, sugar is, is a big thing. Uh, that's why we have such a obesity problem, uh, here in America. Um, and yeah, I'm saying problem. I'm not fat shaming anybody, but obesity is unhealthy. Um, it is a big problem here in the West and we have a lot of MSG in food and we have a lot of, you know, bad, uh, a lot of chemicals and a lot of nasty, weird stuff in our food. Uh, oftentimes we don't even really think about it because it's just kind of like, I mean, what, what, a, what can you do? And B like, I mean, uh, it's not hurting anyone like, you know, you think to yourself, well, I mean, they wouldn't be a successful business if they were hurting people. Well, that's not always the case, <clears throat> but anyway, you know, uh, yeah, I think disregard everything. Well, you don't, don't, you don't need to disregard everything I said, but disregard some of the things I said. And the point is, is to, to get busy, not sex wise, but to find things to keep yourself busy. Uh, because someone said that idle hands are the devil's playthings. That's an old um, idiot. Uh, an old uh, idiom. It, not idiom. Uh, adage. It's an old adage, which means an old saying. Um, a d a g e. If you've never heard the word adage, you can apply that to your vocabulary now and save that word in your head. Adage. A d a g e. It means an old saying, if you will. Not always old. But uh, an age-old adage is what some people say. Why are you bringing the toaster out here? Why are you bringing the toaster? This is not fucking funny, okay? Aubrey, why are you bringing the toaster? I'm having a productive fucking conversation. People are not interrupting me. They're being very kind. And why are you coming in here to, to throw a, 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 a fucking a hammer in this cog? Whatever the adage is, I forget. I'm throwing a toaster in the car. A toaster in the car. Well, get the fucking toaster out of here. Anyway, okay, the next time you're feeling the urge to eat out of boredom or jack off out of boredom or touch yourself out of boredom or watch pornography out of boredom. What is the difference between in the last three? Instead, the difference between the last three. Shut up, Aubrey. Instead, draw something. Be creative. Do something that when you're finished, you won't feel ashamed or sad. You will feel positive and happy. And you'll be able to look at something that you created. Okay? Yes, you create sperm. Yes, you create an orgasm. But like, you know, don't get addicted to that. Get addicted 
to happiness and get addicted to positivity and well don't get addicted to anything but you know instead chase those other things like positive it's you know and it's okay to masturbate i'm not saying it's not okay to masturbate you know whatever i'm not trying to vilify or demonize you know uh masturbation i'm just saying don't get addicted to the to porn okay pornography can be fun it can be it has pros and it has cons we've gone over both today but uh it's important to remember that things can be addictive and to be careful and uh, that's I'm not called period monster it's called sunbathing are just lazy and like stop saying that beeswax friends. They are addicted to food like you. They are piggies like you, fat fucking oink coin coin key. Fat fucking oink coin coin key. Fat fucking oink coin coin key. Fat fucking oink coin. What are you doing right now, Aubrey? I'm teaching a class! I wrote Grand Ginger Baby on the big board! The second person I've written up! Since we've moved. What are you doing? I'm teaching a class. Are you mocking me right now? Does it look like it? I think it does look like it as a matter of fucking fact. Oh, do you? Yes, I do. Do you? Get out of my screen, my now. Get out of my room now. You get out of my room. I'm trying to teach a class. I'm going to tell your husband. I don't care. Do you want me to tell your fiance on you all? I'll tell your Mima on you. Are you serious? Yes. You wouldn't fucking dare. You know damn well I would. You wouldn't dare tell Mima on me. I'm telling you to leave. I will call her right now. I'll, I'll FaceTime my Mima. I will FaceTime my Mima and I will tell on you. Ow! Leave! Next time it's a punch, not a slap, buddy boy. Get out of here. I'm leaving because I'm choosing to. Okay, God, don't yell at me. Why are you always so... Why, why are you yelling? Ah! 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 I can yell too! Always have to fucking yell! Why does she yell so much? Is it because she's ginger? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway! Uh, this stream is the best and funniest stream ever. Okay, I wouldn't say that. Okay, it's not- THIS ISN'T MEANT TO BE A FUNNY STREAM! This is meant to be an educational class! On why you should be careful to not get addicted to pornography. The pros and cons of porn. Okay, there are pros though, and there are cons. Just don't get a- Be careful about getting addicted. Anyway... I'll see all of you tonight. Okay, I know we've only streamed for like, uh, an hour and eleven minutes, but... Today, look, I know a lot of you don't care. I've had a lot going on this week, okay? I don't need to get into the details. Just know that soon, very, very soon, I will be streaming at 2 o'clock and 8 o'clock p.m. Central on time again, okay? Within the next couple weeks. We're just getting settled. Um, I won't be here for a few days, Next week, I'll tell you specifics tomorrow, because I am going to stream tomorrow, even though I don't typically stream on Mondays. I am going to stream tomorrow. Um, so you can expect two streams tomorrow uh, at 2 o'clock p.m. and 8 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, so this is not the last stream of the week, even though I typically only stream from Wednesday to Sunday. I will be streaming tomorrow on Monday as well. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, people? Join the Discord server. Uh, I've had a very fun time with a lot of you. Thank you to the majority of you for being respectful, not people like G.E. Trump and Grand Ginger Baby! Idiots! But to those of you who are respectful, I appreciate you and I hope you show up for tonight's class. To the rotten